Hi, James Whiffin here for Plugin Everything, and today we're gonna to do the Deep Glow tutorial. So let's just start by applying it to an adjustment layer here. And the first thing is radius. So this goes all the way from zero all the way up to 2000. So you can get a really big glow. And you'll notice that by default, we always have repeat edge pixels on here, which you can kind of see, uh, which is nice. You don't have to check that box. It's just always enabled. I'll set that back to default. Exposure is going to multiply the luminance of the pixels that aren't thresholded out. This gets applied afterwards, and then that goes from zero to 10. I'm just gonna increase that to two just for demonstration purposes so we can see what's going on a bit easier. And thresholding here is just like in a normal glow, which pixels are and aren't considered for the glow. To get a better view of what's going on there, we can choose the view to glow input. And these are the pixels that are being used for the glow. To demonstrate that, I'm just gonna turn the thresholding smooth to zero. And essentially now we have what we expect. Any pixels brighter than 71% will be included in the glow and those darker than that will not be included. And this threshold actually, if you're working at 32 bits per channel is HDR. So you can say only want to include pixels brighter than 100 and that would include only HDR pixels. We also have a thresholding smoothness and that's gonna sort of tween quite a gradient between the pixels that are and aren't included. That might be a bit easier to see if we go to the final render here and if I change the difference between smooth of zero and smoothing of 100, you can see the difference there. And that can also help reduce flicker, which is nice. Blend mode we have between screen or add. Screen being recommended for working in non-linear workflow add being recommended for linear workflow. If we did set it to add here, we can see we're getting a bit of crunchy edges here and that's because we're working in sRGB color space. So I'll just turn that back to screen. And that ties in with the gamma correction here. If we're working in sRGB or gamma 2.2, we want this gamma correction turned on because if we don't, colors sort of bunch up and it's just not gonna give us a good result. However, if we were working linearly, I'll just change those settings now, uh, we would not want this gamma correction checked because the gamma was correct and now it's gamma correcting it. Uh, so the gamma is now incorrect. So we would want that turned off. And also working linearly, you would probably want it set to add because now we don't get those crunchy edges. This is all explained in the uh, YouTube series, Having a Glow, where we dive into advanced techniques for getting the best possible glows. We talk about gamma correction and color space. So check that out if you're a little bit confused about the gamma correction and color space. Aspect ratio is really cool. Essentially, we can choose whether we want it more on the X or the Y. So if we put it all the way down to zero, we'd see this is only applying on the Y, all the way up to X, only applying on X, and we can tween it anywhere in between. So that's a really great stylistic option. Spread controls the weighting of the uh, luminance over the entire radius. So if we lowered the spread, that would sort of have the pixels bunch up a bit. And if we increase the spread, they would spread out more. I'd recommend leaving that at the default unless you're changing it to achieve a certain style. Because if you wanted the pixels to spread, uh, normally it would be better to just increase the radius. Chromatic aberration is really cool we can enable that here and you can see we're getting chromatic aberration it's probably a bit much for us keep it nice and subtle but this is just great for introducing some color to parts of your scene that maybe don't have any color and you can choose which combination of channels you want to offset now let's jump down to the quality tab here down sample is how many pixels are going to be considered for the final result essentially it's a little bit like these down sampling here 75% is a good amount to, to start with because there's not much difference between 75 and 100%. There's a little bit, but it's not really noticeable. The performance increase is a lot though, so that's why I would keep it at around 75%, especially while tweaking at least. The result looks accurate, but it's uh, quite a bit faster. And you can, of course, lower that even further, but the lower you go, you can sort of see these grainy artifacts that we're getting. And that might be what you're going for, especially if you had sort of a stylized aspect ratio, just depending on what, what you're after. And to demonstrate the steps multiplier, I'm just gonna set the down sample back to 100% and then lower this to its lowest possible value, which is zero. Uh, and then we can see what this is doing here. It's essentially increasing the quality of the blur algorithm. And so this can create some interesting stylistic results, especially if you really up the radius a lot. So let's go 1500 and lower this to basically zero. We can get some very trippy results here, which is kind of cool. 
Glow iterations is a setting you almost will never need to change. It is, however, useful if your radius is extremely high. So for example, 2000, we can see the quality isn't so great around thin edges, especially around solid thick parts like the middle, you won't really notice a difference at all, but we can see this sort of artifacting here. We can just increase that to the max of 10 and that's gonna smooth that out. However, if you were working with a low radius, it can actually introduce negative artifacts. So keep it at its default, unless you're doing some extremely high radius stuff, and then you would want to increase that to get more quality in the edges. We've already talked about the view. Source opacity is the source being added back to the result based on the blend mode. So if I didn't want the source being screened back on, I could lower the opacity to zero or somewhere in between, and then I could actually choose my own blending mode here. Uh, that's incredibly useful for say if we had flicker in our glow we needed to apply a time remap before the glow but obviously you don't want to time remap the footage because then that's going to look weird you just want to time remap the source of the glow so you can do that by changing the source opacity to zero and then adding the blend mode on the adjustment layer itself now we'll discuss the unmold here i do have a black solid currently but if i turn that off you'll notice there's no difference in the result, but we still don't have an alpha channel. So what Unmalt is gonna do is generate that alpha channel. And that's just because glows require something to be added back onto. The hint here says uh, required for text. And for example, if we had some text here and we wanted to apply the glow directly to the text, just say we didn't we wanted to have these settings custom to just this bit of text here, we're not getting an alpha channel if we don't unmalt. But if we tick that, then we've got both glows going at the same time. So that's useful for if you're applying the effect directly to your layer as opposed to an adjustment layer on top of everything else. So that's pretty much it. Uh, as mentioned before, we have a series on YouTube called Having a Glow, which explores in depth a lot of different techniques for getting the best possible glows. I recommend that if you're looking for some more information or just interested in getting the best possible results. Otherwise, thanks for using this product and I hope you enjoy using it as much as I do.